Hello, Seeker. Welcome to episode one of Answering the Question. There are two of them. Who is the antagonist of Cooley High, and did Cochise need to die for Preach to thrive? Cooley High is a coming-of-age comedy drama film that follows the narrative of high school seniors and best friends Leroy Preach Jackson and Richard Cochise Morris. Written by Eric Montz and directed by Michael Schultz, the film primarily shot in Chicago, Illinois, was a major hit at the box offices, grossing over $13 million. The lighthearted turned tragic story captivated viewers with its comedic portrayal of carefree best friends. The movie shows us events experienced by a group of Cooley Vocation High School students, but intimately follows Preach. This this movie does not have character development that we witness on screen, no plot, no actual MacGuffin, but a makeshift one. And for those that don't know, a MacGuffin is a plot device used in films or books that sets the characters in motion and drives the story, or a clear protagonist versus antagonist element. Stone and Robert could be seen as antagonists since they actively oppose Preach and Cochise, but after Cochise's demise, they are no longer a foe of Preach according to the post credits. There are not any significant options obstacles until the third act, no decisions that propel the story forward, and no stakes. The only time I felt anyone was in danger was when Stone and Robert apprehended Cochise because the movie had made scenarios of Preach evading bodily harm and other fight scenes somewhat comical and inconsequential. No one was carried away in ambulance, was admitted to a hospital, no signs of injury, or viewing of blood. Spoiler alert for anyone who wants to watch the movie on YouTube for free, then come back when you're done. Here is a recap of the movie. In 1964 on Chicago's North Side, Preach and Cochise are best friends who are both celebrating the final weeks of their senior year with their classmates. Cochise was an all-city basketball champion. Preach was an aspiring playwright. While sitting in class, Cochise sleeps while Preach comes up with the idea that Pooter, another classmate and friend, should fake a nosebleed so they can get out of class. As Preach and Pooter leave with the teacher's permission, Cochise, now awake, sneaks out the class room's back door. After class, the trio meet up with another classmate who's sitting outside the school. The group then hitch a ride from school by hanging on the back of a city bus. They end up at Lincoln Park. They spend the day stealing snacks from concession stands and antagonizing animals. After a few hours at the zoo, the group heads back to the neighborhood via train. Once back, the group shoots a few basketball hoops with some locals before Pooter states he needs to return to school before closing to retrieve his books. The group ends up at Martha's, a local hangout, where they run into Dorothy, who tells them she's having a quarter party at her house later that evening. While on the side, Preach is shooting dice with two guys from the neighborhood Stone and Robert. After Preach is chased out of the hangout by the owner for gambling, the group splits up. Coach Chase arrives home where he learns through the mail and finding in the toilet, he received a basketball scholarship attending Grambling State University. The group meet up and binges on alcohol, celebrating Cochise's scholarship before heading off to Dorothy's house party. Once at the party, Preach encounters Brenda, who has no interest in him. While the party's going on, Preach retreats to a bedroom where Brenda is and the two discuss love poems. The party ends when a classmate named Damon shows up and spots Cochise dancing with his girlfriend Loretta. This leads to a fight. After the house party, the group retreats back to Martha's. The group encounters Stone and Robert. The pair ride up in a Cadillac and convince Cochise and Preach to go for a joy ride with them. Driving through the neighborhood downtown Chicago and the Gold Coast area with Stone at the wheel, Preach convinces Stone to let him drive, which leads to attention from the police due to his bad driving. A chase leads from downtown into a garage in which they get away from the police, only to end up hitting a parked car with occupants inside. After the accident, they flee the vehicle, preaching Cochise running in one direction and Stone and Robert in another. The next day, the gang all decide to go to the movies. However, the group is short on cash. Preaching Cochise approach two prostitutes, pretending to want countless services. Later, they are both stating they are actually cops. While searching and threatening to arrest them, one of the women pays $10 to preach to be let go. The other one notices that the police badge is fake. After realizing their scam is blown, the two run off with the money. The group ends up at a movie theater where they watch Moth vs. Godzilla and a fight breaks out between two gangs. The following day of school, Coach and Preach are arrested for being in a stolen car and are charged with Grand Theft Auto. While at the station, the pair are reunited with Stone and Robert, who are also being questioned. Mr. Mason, the boy's history teacher, persuades the police to release Preach and Cochise because of their clean record. Both Stone and Robert remain imprisoned due to them being repeat offenders. Confused as to how 
they were let off the hook early, Preach and Cochise leave the holding area. Thinking that Preach and Cochise placed all the blame on them, Stone and Robert immediately hunt for both of them after being released from jail. While in school, Preach learns that Mr. Mason actually got them out of jail. Preach sets off to look for Cochise to tell him about what Mr. Mason did. Preach runs into Cochise's cousin Jimmy Lee. Jimmy Lee takes him to his apartment. Once there, Preach finds Cochise with his ex-girlfriend. Preach becomes angry and leaves. Preach then retreats to Martha, spotted by Damon. He walks over to a table where Brenda is sitting and begins to apologize. Preach leaves when he sees Stone and Robert, and then he tells Brenda to meet him at a train station in 15 minutes. He tries to sneak out the back. Preach's presence is then made known by Damien. Stone and Robert begin taunting and chasing Preach around the restaurant. After spotting the confrontation, the hangout's owner intervenes, forces both Stone and Robert out of her place with a meat cleaver while Preach is hiding in the restroom. Preach tries to sneak out the side door but is spotted by the pair who are waiting for him outside. After evading them, Preach meets up with Brenda where he learns from her that Cochise went to Martha's looking for him. Stone, Robert, and Damon ultimately find Cochise on a side street. Together, the vengeful trio corner him and beat him severely, leaving him to die. After having been notified of the attack on Cochise, Preach frantically searches the streets. He finds his best friend's lifeless body lying face down under an overpass, using Cochise's untimely death as motivation and inspiration, Preach runs off after the funeral to pursue his dream of becoming a renowned Hollywood poet and writer. So Cochise did not make it to the end of the movie. When the credits roll, the characters who lived through the entire movie are said to have made it to the end. Even in the post credits, if it says someone passed away or there's a post credit scene where someone passes away, unless someone is deceased or dies or is killed during the movie, they made it to the end. There's four shadows shadowing of Cochise being left behind and not making it to the end of the movie. First thing as far as foreshadowing is while sitting in class, Cochise slept while Preach came up with the idea that Pooter should fake a nosebleed so they can get out of class. Preacher never communicated to Cochise he was leaving, nor woke him up. Cochise woke up on his own just in time to see them leaving, then he followed. Cochise finding his basketball scholarship in the toilet, to me, was a sign that his hopes of leaving the neighborhood for a better life life was going to be crapped on. Preach was the antagonist the entire movie in my opinion and he influenced degenerate and illegal behavior in Cochise. Cochise was one of the major characters and the only one with a type of MacGuffin which was getting the basketball scholarship to attend Grambling State University. Here's why Preach was the antagonist in my opinion. He was actively opposing Cochise attending Grambling State University through influencing degenerate and illegal behavior. There wasn't an actual MacGuffin, a thing that they were looking for to move the story forward but in my opinion the second antagonist was the neighborhood when it comes to people who grow up in low income poor neighborhoods the neighborhood itself with all the people in it they're antagonistic to you most majority of the time you have to leave in order to thrive if you are successful when you're in this neighborhood and people know you have things due to a scarcity mindset the people in your neighborhood and your environment will come against you the second antagonist was the neighborhood the first antagonist was preach preach his actions would have kept Cochise in the neighborhood. Even if Cochise did not die at the hands of Stone and Robert, I do believe that something Preach would have done would have caused Cochise to not be able to attend the university. Maybe joyriding in other vehicles, doing something else illegal. They were stealing in the beginning of the movie. Preach was influencing Cochise to do illegal, immoral, and unethical things to the point where anything could have happened and more than likely would have happened to prevent Cochise from going to this university. Preach was shooting dice with Stone and Robert at Martha's as illegal, which prompted did Stone and Robert to convince Cochise and Preach to joyride in a stolen Cadillac, even though the latter did not know it was stolen. Preach then convinced Stone to let him drive, even though he did not have a driver's license. Preach, while evading the police, hit a parked car with occupants inside and fled the scene on foot. Cochise followed. Preach came up with the idea to scam hookers using a police badge to get money for the movies. Preach made a bet with Cochise that he could have sex with Brenda, therefore cheating on his girlfriend.
girlfriend, which were two immoral acts. When it comes to just the word preach, preach is what a preacher or a holy man of the church does. During the entire movie, the character preach didn't actually preach. He was dressed up like a preacher, but outside of looking like a preacher, throughout the movie with the dress shirt and tie, he was the opposite of what a holy man or a preacher would be. It's almost like a character whose name is Tiny, but he's very, very large, or someone who's named Joker, and they make jokes that only they understand and usually they want to hurt people. You have this duality where a person's named one thing, but they're really something else. That kind of holds true to Preach in that, in my opinion, based off his actions, he didn't have anything positive or promising in his life. And he was a product of his environment with the environment being a neighborhood, both preach and the environment both being antagonists to people who were going to be successful in the future, i.e. Cochise. Preach did not tell Cochise that Mr. Mason got them out of jail because Preach found out Cochise was with his girlfriend. Preach left because he was upset. But here's the thing. How can anyone really take anyone that Preach messes with serious? Even Brenda, who he was discussing poetry with, it was just a bet. Preach was bragging about winning the bet after he and Brenda had sex. Even though Preach may have deep down liked her, there wasn't enough evidence in the movie that Brenda was anything special except for someone that he wanted to entertain long term but not actually do anything meaningful with. Even after the credits roll at the end of the movie, Brenda goes off, she's married, she has a whole other life. Preach, he went on to be a writer. Preach and Brenda didn't get together at the end of the movie. The last time that Preach was even interacting with Brenda or in a scene with her, Brenda was telling Preach that Cochise was looking for him. Majority of the movie, Preach was bumbling around doing antics and looking for women to sleep with. It doesn't make sense that Preach would expect Cochise or anyone to view a woman that he's dealing with as just his property or someone that he's with serious or there's a bro code where you don't mess with anybody else's woman in the past. They're so busy trying to pump and dump, beastie delete, smash and dash so many different women that the bro code just seems like it wouldn't really apply because the way that they viewed women were just objects. However, some people would say that there is a bro code where if there's a woman that someone messes with, you don't mess with that woman or someone's ex-girlfriend. So I understand that. It's just that throughout the movie, there just wasn't any emphasis on anything serious except for the scenes with Preach and Brenda. But Brenda was a bet. He was just trying to pump and dump, doing things that young men do, which is just bounce around, being horn dogs and trying to hump anything moving. Preaching upset with Cochise being with a girlfriend, he did not tell Cochise that Mr. Mason got them out of jail. That information may have influenced Stone and Robert to not beat Cochise to death. Stone and Robert, they're seasoned criminals. They're no one to play around with and Preach had no problem gambling with them, joyriding with them, and even asking can he drive. So Preach was no stranger to the criminal element or even being close to it. For Preach to get upset and not tell Cochise that Mr. Mason got them out of jail because Preach knew that would vindicate them. In my opinion, that was Preach subconsciously wanting to condemn Cochise to whatever fate he would suffer. I do believe that at that moment, Preach subconsciously didn't care what happened to Cochise and that's the reason why he didn't tell them that information. So it's one thing to be upset by what you see or what you found by a woman that you cheated on anyway. If you're upset about this girlfriend, a woman that didn't even want to make out with you, I just don't really think that Preach was that upset with Cochise that he couldn't tell him about what Mr. Mason did. You may disagree. You might say that in the heat of things, he was upset. He felt Cochise betrayed him. That's why he couldn't tell him anything. I think that subconsciously Preach was okay with what happened to Cochise. Preach only went to look for Cochise after someone said that Cochise had been looking for him. That's when a light bulb went off. Oh, Cochise is looking for me. Stone and Robert have been looking for me. Let me go find Cochise. So it was kind of like an afterthought. The writing is not really all that good. So I believe the antagonist of Cooley High was Preach. I do believe that if Cochise did not die, Preach would not have been able to thrive. I don't think that Cochise had a chance. To me, the main takeaway is the people who you think are your friends may be the ones to cause your downfall. 